Air Canada will jet you to Hawaii for seven days. Okay, let's go back up to the eye in the sky and Kathy Morse high above the stadium right now. Thank you very much, Kathy. I see all the dignitaries are leaving the uh, the podium right now, Terry, and uh, the roof continues to inflate. That's interesting watching that uh, go up like that. It's 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 interesting because if anybody who has ever gone on a sailboat knows what it's like when the wind hits a sail and it really gets out and it starts to tighten and starts to billow, and that's precisely what's happening right now. Some of these sections are beginning to inflate that way. I gave I gave us is, is Shirley Stalker's the correct term a simile uh, at the very early part of the broadcast this morning at about 9:20. I said if you could imagine yourself being an aphid or an ant start, standing underneath the largest mushroom you have ever seen. That's how insignificant you are inside this stadium and then looking upwards as this begins to inflate because it, it really, it is just one of the most astronomical pieces of fabric that I've ever seen in my life. It does dis defy description. There's no doubt about it. It's, you know, right now when you're walking and wallowing through the mud and you, and you see the massiveness of the size of this thing, you can't really... You can't really conceive of what it would be like when it's finished, but it is huge, it, and your simile is a very good one. Let's get over here and see if we can grab Stephen Rogers, all right? And we'll talk with him, the Honorable Stephen Rogers, whose ministry is the one in charge of all of this. I'll just walk through the mud bowl here as I'm walking across the... <laughs> Someday, somebody's going to play on this surface. It'll be in a much better shape than it is right now because it's all mud, and it's going to be one of the most incredible things that you've ever seen in your life. It's uh, really... Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers, do you have a moment with us, sir? We're live on the air on NW. Stephen, congratulations with your ministry and all the people involved. This is going to be a thrilling morning for you. Oh, you can't believe it. It's just fantastic. It's going up so well. The crowd is so happy. And it's a beautiful day for Vancouver, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the city. I think just the historical significance alone, but the thing from a, from a technical point of view, from what had to be done just to put this together, it's, it's been one of the largest undertakings in Canada. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. We are, we are so pleased that it's been done so professionally, so well by everybody involved. You know what's interesting? What the Premier said, it'll be the last time that it'll ever rain in here, but I don't think people expected that when they came in this morning, but it's all part and parcel of this whole thing. But what's so good about it, nothing... Did you have any anticipation on that stage today when you were giving the opening addresses that, gee, I hope all of those buttons work and that all of the connections are there? Well, I'll tell you, I have been sitting... I, I don't know how much sleep I've lost on this project. I'll tell you, the one time I felt very much like the father or the bride, I have just... I, it's just, we, we just weren't positive. We had a few dress rehearsals, and but it, it looks like it's starting to go up now. Oh, it it's is. just in beautiful inverted shape inside here. Look at the panels behind the us tables, over here. The, the speakers yeah. are moving up right oh, now, yeah. part of the sound system. And uh, we've actually cut back on fans. We're not running 16 already. I, uh, my, my signal man told me that. We The building is so tight and so well built that we're, we're going to put it up just as the way it is now with even less than the 16 right. Well, have you got your seats picked out yet for the coming seasons? You bet. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. And, and I, th I think, I think, I think the, we, the, the, what we want to make sure is 60,000 other people pick out their seats, and I think the facility makes it worthwhile. And if the teams do what we think they will, we know we'll fill it up. Thank you very much, the Honorable Stephen Rogers. Surely it's, it's an exciting morning for everybody. Who do we have up next? Here. Mr. Dillingham. Okay. <laughs> Not the Mr. Dillingham. No. Joe Burnett is no. the uh, man who's... Uh, whose company has been in charge of getting this whole thing together, this massive project. How many tons of concrete did we look at in the pouring initially? We have, uh, in in Tony's, we have uh, 50. Now what's a Tony? I, okay, that's a metric uh, yard of concrete. Right. Okay, and we have uh, 50,000 uh, yards of concrete in the building. 46 tons in the roof itself today with all of the Teflon fiberglass cables and everything else. No, we have 280 tons on the roof today. 280? Yes. What did we get the word from the Teflon panels and everything else where it came out to, what, 92,000 pounds or 46 tons? Yes, that's uh, there. But then you have the cables ah, and okay. all the uh, speakers that are also hanging up there. 
Well, I, I guess you must be thrilled seeing that everything seems to be working so far. Well, it's a great day for us, and it's a great day for everybody who was involved in the construction. Joe, have you had a lot of confidence right from the very beginning? Did you lose, get many sleepless nights? No, we were confident from the beginning. Uh, our involvement with BC Place has been great. Uh, it's been a team effort, and uh, along with the Phillips Barrett, the engineer group, it's just been uh, really good uh, dealing with everybody involved. Thank you very much, Joe, and uh, good luck with the rest of the construction. Thank you very much. Thank you. David. Okay, Mr. Geiger, uh, David Geiger, who is one of the uh, the architects involved in the construction of this stadium, and I'm going to turn Mr. Geiger over to Shirley Stocker. Shirley? Well, how do you feel? It's your roof. You're the daddy of this wonderful roof, and it's on its way up. It sure is. I feel great. Uh -huh. You have constructed how many of these particular type of roofs Twelve. around the roof? Twelve. Yeah. And this is, uh, what, the seventh or eighth of uh, this particular type around the world? This is number 12. Oh. It's the last of the... Oh, how many we, we have another one in, in construction in Indianapolis. We have one in design for Venezuela. But this is the very first in Canada. Yes, it is. How did you find working with the Canadians here, putting this roof together? I think it's been terrific. They, just the, the people we've been working with, I've adopted Vancouver as the second home. I love the, the people and the, the, the place so much. I was reading this morning that you are the inventor of this type of roof. Is yes, that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did it all come about that you uh, decided that this was the way to go with stadiums? Uh, it was invented actually in the context of doing the United States Pavilion at Expo 70 in Osaka, Japan. And uh, it was very logical to extend it to the stadiums uh, because of both the uh, low cost, the speed of construction, and uh, it uh, has borne out uh, in terms of just when we started doing stadiums in 1974, there are only six stadiums and covered stadiums in the world, and now there are 13, and we've done the remaining seven. And you've done beautifully. Thank you, Mr. Geiger. Thank you. Let's break for the news. We'll come back to the inflation of the dome at, at BC Stadium in just a right. few moments. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Paul Hedrick with NW News 211. The roof on the BC Place Stadium is going up. Marlena Gale reports. It's the centerpiece of a downtown redevelopment plan in Vancouver. Today, he pressed the button which began the inflation of the world's largest inflatable dome. That's the only kind of inflation we want pretty soon. Bennett went to great lengths to justify the multi-million dollar cost, saying the project is part of an eventual housing and business development and it would pay for itself. He says it will draw tourists in addition to creating 2,000 construction jobs a year for the next 20 years. Marlene Gale at the BC Place Stadium. Next news on CKNW when it happens, next scheduled newscast at 12 noon. <laughs> That song would be mildly appropriate to play at this point in time. It's Christopher Cross, Ride Like the Wind. We are here at BC Play Stadium, CKNW, the entire broadcast crew, bringing you the play-by-play -play as it happens. A big roof going up right now. The back section, the east section, where we're situated, has, uh, has uh, started to inflate. I don't quite know if you can see it from the outside. And uh, just in a couple of moments from now, we'll be checking in with Bill Strafford at Dick Irwin Chevrolet. Let's find out how much of the roof you can see uh, from up top and Kathy Morse. You actually can't see quite a bit of the roof. You must be able to see it along the viaduct, but I finally figured out what it looks like from up here. What it looks like is the upholstery of a 56 Chevy. It's exactly like rolling up the upholstery, and it's really getting very puffy around the outside edges. Even in the center, you can see some of the air effects now. Thank you very much, Kathy. And uh, Terry Moore is standing by right now. I think uh, Terry wants to uh, uh, get in here in just a couple seconds. We have to check first, though, with Bill Strafford from the North Shore and Dick Irwin Chevrolet. 845 Marine Drive in the North Shore is the exact address of that, Rich. And as a matter of fact, Terry Moore will be here a little later on this afternoon, uh, passing along to you some of the great buys that you'll find here at Dick Irwin. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. We're back live here at BC Play Stadium. Rich Elwood at CKNW. It's 11.15, and here's Terry Moore. We are with the man who pushed uh, button number 13, and it was not an unlucky 13, Jim Patterson, who was the chairman of Expo 86. They backed it up to number 12. Oh, did they? <laughs> well, I was sitting there looking at it, and I wasn't sure if it was 13 or 12. I, I thought... I thought it was 13, too, but it was number 12. Well, this is going to be an exciting day for you, not just because this is the, the first apple in the eye of Expo 86, but the whole significance of this stadium and what you're looking at. Well, there's no question this is an exciting day for me and uh, for everybody in this part of the world. And, uh, and I'll tell you, it's a great credit to Vancouver. And uh, this is the first visible uh, thing that everybody can see as we go forward now to put on uh, Expo 86. And this is going to mean enormous. Uh, asset for us. I think the Premier uh, addressed some of the, the remarks that a lot of us are feeling this morning, and that is how significant that this stadium and the whole Expo project is going to be to the whole financial community. Well, of course, this is going to do a lot. This will give us a new opportunity to bring conventions, uh, bring uh, special events, new sports uh, opportunities that this town could never have, or this province, or Western Canada for that matter. It's going to give us a whole new shot in the arm including uh, all of our hospitality industries, the hotels, the restaurants. This is going to do a lot for our part of the world. Jimmy, uh, it may be a little early to talk about it, but do you have people already signed up and committed for Expo 86 and for the area of the stadium? Yes, we have 13 uh, countries now signed up uh, for Expo 86, uh, the last one being Australia. Uh, uh, Commissioner General Patrick Reed and myself just got back from Moscow. In We're getting last, rained on, by the way. Uh, I see that. Yeah. In the last, uh, uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks, we were over there negotiating with the Russians on their participation. Uh, they haven't agreed to come, but they're coming over with their architects to look at the site in the next uh, couple of months. So we're very optimistic that uh, things are going ahead of schedule actually for us. Jimmy, I think looking at this stadium this morning and the way everything is coming along so well with that roof going up uh, ever so gradually, but certainly we can see it happening, the logistics of just putting this type of a complex together, the paperwork alone must have been phenomenal. It, it, it absolutely was. And uh, the Dillingham people and Alvin Nayrod, the chairman, and Gil Hardman are really have done a tremendous job, and they've done it on time, they've done it on budget, and I'll tell you, it's a real credit to, uh, to our community. Our thanks to Jimmy Patterson for his time today. He is the chairman of Expo 86, and who is going to be the first major tenant of BC Place. Rich, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Terry. Let's check back with Bill Stratford and all the good people up at Dick Irwin Shibbles, 845 Marine Drive, North Vancouver. 11:19 at CKNW. We just received a call to our NW control room in New Westminster from a person who's listening this morning. Lives uh, in East Vancouver, and they said they can see the top of the stadium. The roof uh, is now becoming visible over the uh, the concrete uh, outside wall. So that's uh, nice to find out. And now community calendar brought to you by General Paint. This is Al Davidson. You know, I see many good things in this province of ours, and one of them is the excellent work done by the Boys and Girls Club of Vancouver. The club is holding its annual Vegas night at the Hotel Vancouver, November 25th. You should be there not only to help the Boys and Girls Club, but to enjoy an evening filled with fun, good food, and an opportunity to walk away with a jackpot. For more details, please phone the Vancouver Boys and Girls Club, 321-5548.